How can we sleep when our wizards are burning? Welcome, everybody. It's Wizard Wednesday. Dota, are you ready? I'm so ready. Awesome. As I said, it is Wednesday, October 27th, 2021, and it is time for our cult meeting, a.k.a. Wizard Freaking Wednesday. This is Elf. And Dota. Channeling in from the Quantum Downs. It's four days away, my witches and wizards. Four days until the greatest event in NFT history. Their forgotten runes, Great Wizard Burning. What intrepid wizards will step to the fire? And if they do, what will return? Disgusting ghouls and zombies? Maybe a lich? Maybe a legendary ghost? Maybe a pathetic pile of blood and guts? What other secrets are hidden in these sacred flames? Find out in the basement of the secret tower on All Hallows' Eve. Dota, you and I have been burning the midnight oil, perfecting this collection, putting that Forgotten Runes magic into it. How do you think it's going, my friend? It looks like fire. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It is so fire, dude. You know, it, I, I and I think you feel the same way. I, I, I'm, I'm getting the vibes that I got when we first made the wizard collection. Because, like, totally, I, yeah. I, I, I super agree. I feel like when we first did wizards originally, you know, the first version, it, it's, it comes out. You can squint and see something promising, but it doesn't. It's not quite there yet. And it just takes like hundreds of iterations and iterations and sculpting and sanding and tweaking. And, um, right. and it's really, really coming together now. It's like, I almost, you know, I, I'm almost sad that we're only going to see maybe a thousand of these because there's really like 10,000 gems in the collection. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's so much more artwork than will actually be revealed. Um, cause there's only like a hundred or thousand ish flames. So but yeah, I think it's I think it's gonna be super cool. It's you know for me it's like, like y you you do the a first few couple passes with your generator, and they look good, and then we tweak the generator more and they look better, and then we say okay maybe we add like a new body here and a new head there and we change this body and what if we add this familiar and what if we add this spell, and then it just starts singing. Yep. And yeah, I, it, it's like that last 20% polish just really is what sets it apart. I super agree. Yeah, I tweeted out um, a quote that I really love from Teller earlier this week, which is just the idea that magic, it, the idea of magic sometimes is just spending more time on something than anyone else would think is reasonable. And I, I feel that way sometimes when we're just like tweaking every pixel from the rib bone of a lich. And it's just um, it's really becoming special. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, this is a tip for anyone who's like trying to do their own collection. Like, don't just like finish the art and then push it to their generator and then you're done. Like, you've got to do several generations you've got to keep fussing with the art just do like 10 20 generations add more edit more just really polish the hell out of it until the whole collection looks great that's that's the biggest tip i can give um cool so uh we've got bear snake of course and Loch Ness. yeah Wolfram i'm here guys. in the same room as bear snake what's up team i and guess what i let him hold my tungsten cube it's heavier than you would think. Yeah, yeah. This is the first time Dota and Bear Snake are meeting in person. So I guess you guys are in the same yeah. house together right now. Yeah, he's at my house right now. Amazing. Exciting. Very exciting. He's taller than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, cool. Um, yeah. And just, uh, you know, I also want to like uh, just quickly talk about that storyboard that I just pushed this morning. Um, I think it's one of the best boards we've done. I, I just, I, I love it. Um, and, and I just want to say like, I myself did not draw those boards. Um, just, just for clarification. Um, I've got this amazing, talented storyboard artist named Augustin. He lives in Germany actually. Um, and he's not even on Twitter. I've, I've told him, I was like, dude, if you just get on Twitter, you'll probably get 100 followers today or more just from those boards. 
don't try to track him down. Don't try to find him and don't try to hire him. He yeah, knows. he's freaking amazing. Um, he just gets it. Yeah. And so, yeah. He's a soul. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, and just for another point of clarification, I think two Wizard Wednesdays ago, I talked about having this DreamWorks uh, storyboard artist working for us. Augustine is not that guy. This is another storyboard artist who I, I haven't fully been able to bring on yet. Um, I, I'm still learning my lesson on like announcing things that are going to happen and then they don't happen. So, oh, I had a nightmare about that last night. Like I literally had a nightmare last night that I announced on Twitter that we were dropping a token. <laughs> And you were pissed. <laughs> you were like, why would you tell them that we were dropping a token? Like, we never talked about this. You just made this up. And I literally like woke up and checked my phone right away, like check to see if I, I sent that message because it felt like so real. And so we are not dropping a token. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone was in Dota's dreams last night. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, I hate that I yell at you in your dreams. That makes me sad. <laughs> It's fine. I mean, if you announce a token, you'd yell at me too. Yeah. The other <laughs> Fair enough. Um, cool. Yeah. So, those, yeah. But the, again, the storyboard, I, it's one of my favorites we've done. And it's, um, you know, what's cool about it is it gives you a little bit of previews on, on what the burning is going to be like. Um, and then, you know, just another thing about the burning is so j we decided, you know, we want to do it like we want to make it an event. Um, and there's been lots of ideas floating around in the Discord, floating around in our team. Like, how, how do we make this an actual event? And so we're going to do a, um, a, a live watch party in Discord. But um, Loch Ness is the one putting this thing together. It was pretty much her idea. So Loch Ness, do you want to tell us all about this? Hey, wizards. What's <laughs> up? <laughs> yeah, so we came up with the idea of broadcasting your burn. Um, and there's some limitations that we have to work around on Discord, and I want to open up the conversation to the wizards here to talk about that and give a quick shout out to O for making a great summary and shouting it out in the Gathering Guild on Discord. Um, definitely on par with what we were thinking. So you basically will have the opportunity to sign up for a opportunity to broadcast your burn live now the reason why there's a sign up sheet is because discord only allows 50 folks to watch a screen share at a time in any particular channel and currently the stage channels do not allow folks to screen share i don't know why it would be great if we could like set up a stage and have people come up to burn but unfortunately we don't have that capability on discord so we'll have to supplement that with a voice channel where you will share your screen and share your sound i'm a part of a community that uh, we have like these scheduled like chaos hours that are like maybe twice a month where just everyone comes in and like shares their video share screen and just you know shoots the shit and um it's really fun and i wanted to bring that here so because there's only 50 spots we wanted to open up the conversation and explore having you know, if there is, for example, a coven of witches who want to host a witch burning or a horde of kobolds who decide they want to host their own burn event. Um, because anyone can burn at any time, you can also explore hosting your own burning with your horde or just by yourself. And we'll create a space on Discord that has both a voice channel and a corresponding uh, chat channel so that you can also host that event on your own. The first of which, of course, is happening this Sunday for Halloween and the Great Burning. Anyone can burn at any time. So just because you're not broadcasting your burn doesn't mean you can't burn and share that in Discord anyhow. But yeah, I want to open it up to any wizard here who is interested in broadcasting their burn. Uh, get to know if that's like a vibe you guys are feeling. And yeah. So... So, yeah, so just for my own clarification, um, and you pretty much spelled it out, but but yeah, anyone who wants to burn, like Crypto Kel or, Ma or Magus Devin or Edward, if you guys want to burn your wizard, you will be able to broadcast that burn in our Discord so that everybody will be able to see it, at least 50 people at a time, right? Yes, 50 Amazing. people at a time, yeah. 
And, Rick. you know, if there's a sections or hordes that want to burn at the same time, we could have, we could explore having multiple. I just, you know, the more eyes on one wizard, the better. Yep. Yeah. What I like about this is like most people only have one flame, so they only get to burn one time and you get one soul in return. And that's great. But like there's so many souls in this collection and they're all very different. And so I think it's cool that you all get to see what everybody else gets. Um, you get exposure to the whole collection more. And like also this burn sequence itself that Dota and I have been putting together, I think it's pretty awesome. Yeah, and that's like part of the whole effect too, is that at any point you can see like you'll hear the music that goes along with it. Yep. And like see the entire sequence, which is really unique for Wizards. So Yep. And and speaking of music, Dr. Slurp came up with some really cool ideas on that with the sound and the music. So Norks of the Wood is asking on Discord about what the exact time is. Um so the um we will publish the exact block number. Um, I'll try to publish it on Friday. So just so everyone knows, it's going to be a block number, not a time. So if, uh, if you're relatively new, uh, you may not know that, for example, on the blockchain, it doesn't actually have a wall clock time. It only has the block number. And so um, it's, a bit, it's fair for everyone. Um, and we will post a countdown timer to the block number. Um, in our discord but it should be somewhere um i'm gonna target somewhere around like 10 a.m central on the 31st um and so that will kind of give us a few hours in the morning to make sure that everything's up and running but i'm probably gonna go trick-or-treating with my kids by sure. the night yep awesome um yeah any questions so far let's open it yeah, up yeah someone mentioned actually one of the 50 people who are watching the burn in our discord to stream it onto youtube which is a great idea so if we have any volunteers who are going to be around and we'll create a thread on the secret tower just so we can like flush out the ideas and make sure everybody's on the same page but that's a great idea yeah very cool and there's no timeline either. There's no time limit either, right? Like, don't feel sort of pressure. If you're very nervous about it, you don't have too many wizards, you're not really sure if you want to do it or not, You're for, there's no rush. You know, for every flame, there is a soul. You know, if you wait until um, you know, as long as you want, frankly, uh, you can still burn your wizard at any time. So if you're a bit anxious about it, don't, don't worry about waiting to see what others mm -hmm. do. Um, of course, if you are... Uh, uh, more of a gambler and you want to be first we will all be waiting to see what you receive yep yeah and the space on discord will be open from you know sunday on so if at any point anybody wanted to broadcast their burn like two years from now they could do that in that space as well very cool any other questions or comments guess not Everybody's clear on the burn. Um, cool. Dota, do you have anything else you want to say about it? I'm making some blog posts for instructions on how to burn. I'm making instructions for, I'm, I'm working on like a collector's guide. Um, you know, I, the, the, while the souls are of course free in the sense that you don't have to pay any ETH, um, to mint one of course the cost is a wizard and hey a i had a um, question oh. if that's okay sure sure sure, sure uh, thing. i Go mean ahead. probably sound off i can't hear <laughs> oh that's better that's better um, okay if i ask a quick question yeah sure yeah um so i'm interested in the phrase uh, that was just said for every soul I mean, for every flame, there is there is a soul, um, and you might not want to let this uh, out yet. But I am just sort of wondering a bit about the mechanics. So, does every flame have a particular rarity or mechanic or procedure, or is it um, every flame is is equal and fungible? And whenever does someone does the burn, uh, random number Jesus uh, works his way with their wizard. Hopefully, that makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'll be putting together a collector's guide that will put these ideas in writing. But let me um, kind of um, explain it a little bit, which what I what I don't mind telling you, which is 
yeah, there's no difference between the the sacred flame NFTs themselves. They're all the same. They don't really affect kind of um, the outcome. There are essentially um, two or maybe three, depending on how you think about it, outcomes that are possible um, when when you transmute your wizard through the flame. The first would be that your wizard um, passes through the flame and is transmuted into a soul. Um, and so there is basically a set of outcomes for your particular wizard that um, that that are possible, and your wizard affects it, right? You know, um, the 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 affinity your own wizard has, the the, the traits that your wizard has, it, it turns into a soul in a way that no other soul uh, will transmute. The second possibility is uh, the chance of an undesirable. We're playing with black magic, and it's unpredictable. And um, it, there's, I don't mind telling you, there's uh, roughly one in ten chance of getting an undesirable. Um, and so, if you want to kind of run those numbers in your head, there's about there's one thousand one hundred and twelve flames. That's the max supply of souls. One thousand one hundred and twelve. Um, and there are about one in 10, so you could say 10%, which is maybe around 100, um, undesirable possible outcomes. Um, so these undesirables, some of the things we talked about today, are maybe a pile of dust or a pile of blood and guts or something like that. The third outcome, the third outcome is there are in the uh, set of Forgotten Souls um, a few ultra rares, and you'll just have to wait and see. Uh, for those. So that would be kind of the, like the mechanics. Um, so folks have asked, you know, saying, well, uh, you know, what if I use a super rare wizard? What if I, you know, what uh, I, I paid, I paid, you know, so much ETH for this wizard. What if I put that through the flame? Oh, you know, or, you know, this wizard has your face on it, Dota. What if I put this through the flame? Or what about honoraries? And I think our answer to that really is that there's um, there's no wizard that would be unaffected by the flame. That is, every wizard will be affected if it's transmuted through the flame, there's no wizards that can't be sent through. Um, and, but I think that, you know, it, it's unpredictable magic there. So um, now someone else asked, does it matter? Do, what if I do first? What if I do last? Um, I can tell you that the order matters somewhat, but, uh, you know, I would, I, I, we, it doesn't, there's nothing to tell you whether earlier is better or later is better, but the order does matter. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, the only other thought that I would add is this is the first NFT project um, that the actual kind of lore is overwhelming, you know, my, my wallet and my gambling sense because I sold my flame on uh, because I was so attached uh, to my wizards. <laughs> and now, and uh, seriously, I was like, I'm not doing black magic to these guys. They're, ha <laughs> they're, they're a happy married couple. I'm not doing it to them. Yeah. Uh, and, and now I have this FOMO about the uh, the whole burn, but I'm actually enjoying the FOMO, which is a new <laughs> a new experience for me. So congratulations uh, that you've got. Um, such a really good mechanic going and I'd love to write a few more burn poems uh, before uh, burn day and maybe after and if there's time at the end of Wizard Wednesday I have one from Zarkum that I just wrote today I'd like to share oh interesting okay. fantastic yeah yeah and also on like the tokenomics too I think it's really important for people to understand that you're burning your wizard token you're losing the wizard token that you had and getting a soul in return and so um both one it's different from let's say mutant apes where you kept your original ape if they drank the serum or something um it, so whereas that was inflationary, this is actually deflationary, both for wizards and for flames, which is something that is interesting. Like, you know, uh, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to kind of see how folks feel about the souls versus kind of the flames and the wizards themselves. And so but as a wizard is burned, actually, the number of wizard tokens is um, m minus by one. The number of flames is minus by one and the number of souls is plus by one. Yep. I, I had a question. So, uh, Absolutely. Hey, hey. By the way, um, so I think you kind of answered it out, but but my question was not every art is necessarily going to be put into the collection, right? Depending on what wizards are burned and the randomness, is that right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. There are fewer parts 
in the souls collection. Mm -hmm. We may even publish the numbers just so people can kind of help make their calculation. Yeah, not every, there's not like a one-to-one -one swap for every part. Let's put it that way. No, no way. Yeah, so that's a really important thing to think about in terms of affinity. Someone has asked us, oh, if I have a five of five affinity, is that going to be a five of five soul? And the answer is not necessarily. Um, you know, your your affinities are being transmuted through the flame. And so uh, you're not guaranteed sort of the same degree of rarity. You're not necessarily degree, guaranteed the same uh, it, it's you won't have the same affinity actually like you certainly won't have the same yep. affinity yep cool thanks yep hey uh someone also asked will the souls appear in the same collection on an open seer or separately and there'll be a separate collection and so you'll see actually you know we talk a lot about how there's ten thousand wizards there won't be ten thousand really in the same sense anymore that actually actually reminds me of something i want to go over quickly I've noticed a lot of fake flames on OpenSea, which is just so sad to see, but I think every single collection suffers from this. Um, so Dota, can you give any like pointers on how to detect a real flame versus a fake flame? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, like be careful, I suppose, is the main thing. Like <laughs> with any NFT that you buy, go through um, official channels. So we post it in our own official announcements. We've linked to it on our blog, like on our website. So uh, there's no other way. I mean, if you know of a fake one, report it. Yeah. Um, but I think that's, that's it. So someone had a question. I, I didn't quite see who it was. Hey, it's me. Um, first, I just wanted to give a shout out to Gnosis Dosis, a.k.a. Compulsive um Redoser on Twitter, I had the privilege of going to see his Flame Skull Wizard mural in Austin this week, and it was so cool. Oh, nice. Um, really cool. well done. I highly encourage anybody who's passing through Austin or just, you know, happens to be there to go check it out. Really dope to see our wizards in the real world. Yep. Um, question on the burn, will there be some sort of graveyard to memorialize uh, all the wizards that have been burned throughout the months and years? Um, yeah, well, sort of. So when you burn your wizard, um, uh, an entry is written automatically to the Book of Lore. That's part of the transaction um, that we kind of built into the Book of Lore is that, is that sort of their final moments are, are posted there. Um, uh, we're working on making the Book of Lore like better, having discovery better, adding more features. There's all these things we want to add. Um, and so that will be one of the pages, like or at least like a directory that we'll add, which is sort of like the, the, the tales of burned wizards. Um, though I'll admit that we won't have that on day one, but for sure it's something that we want to do. Yep. And can we, can we edit a dead wizard? We can't edit its old lore, right? If it's burnt. That's right. Yeah, because technically you won't own that token any longer. You won't be, is, you know, the book of lore. Dota, I think you cut out. Yeah, he cut out. I think we, I think he was going to say the book of lore. You can only um, write it if you actually own the token from your wallet. Um, once you actually burn it with the sacred flame it should be sent over to the dead wallet. So it will be no longer in your possession. So you shouldn't be able to write anything about it anymore. And there's no way to retrieve that wizard anymore either. So um, if there's any lore that you want to write about that wizard, um, I would advise you probably write it before you send him off into the flame because um, there's it's a one-way street. That's correct. Yep. I also want to talk a little bit about the on-chain-ness of Forgotten Souls because I think, uh, and again, I'll write about this, but I think that um, it's important to like, some people are curious, like I'll write, put this in the collector's post. You know, one of the things that we sort of brag about with the Forgotten Ones Wizards is the fact that all of the um, pixels and attributes can be recreated from on-chain data, including the names, uh, which is like relatively rare even among NFTs. Um, so Forgotten Souls is a bit different because what you basically have is sort of these three constraints. One is... Um, like like secrecy privacy that like of of the what will be burned so that way you can't be botted right like we've all been part of mints where the rares get sniped or people who have bots some have some sort of information advantage we've worked really hard to make sure that there's no information information advantage for bots at whatsoever um and then we also want to make sure that when you when you mint your soul that you have kind of an instant reveal 
that you're able, you mint your soul, you see it right away. That You don't have to wait like 48 hours for some reveal, which would be weird anyway, because there's no time limit on the burning. Um, but all of that together, kind of those constraints make it actually very difficult because let's say that we uploaded the entire collection of all, you know, what the 10,000 souls were to be on chain. Well, now maybe we make it difficult, but someone with a bot can actually detect like, oh, if I burn my wizard, would I get a rare or not? And we want to avoid that situation. So what we basically are doing is kind of a tiered approach initially the nfts are actually stored kind of on our server which is like uh in, which a lot of projects do and people don't seem to mind uh, but in the first version we'll be hosting essentially like a centralized gated version of the images and the data um, from there we've built into the contract a checkpointing where we can send it to ipfs um, so if you're familiar with the technicalities like IPFS is good because it's a standardized system where everyone can kind of like um, do perform their own backups. It's replicated across a lot of places, right? You know, if, you know, Elf and I sort of die and disappear off the planet. You can at least recover all of your NFT data from IPFS. But of course, IPFS has its own shortcomings, which is like IPFS itself could maybe purge your data. And that's a problem. That's one of the things you wanted to avoid. Again, pretty much every other NFT on the planet, 99% of them. Um, are using IPFS, but still for us, that wasn't good enough. And so we still, on the third case, we have provided a way for putting the souls on chain again in snapshots. Um, but we'll just have to do it periodically. Gas is really expensive. We have to wait and kind of see like how many people have turned forward. So, um, you know, what you'll basically see in the beginning is it sort of ranks maybe kind of low in terms of like the centralization, but we provided like an upgrade path to make it be like fully on chain, just like wizards eventually. But we have to wait to see what people burn before that's even possible. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense. Um, and then Dota, actually one more thing I want you to maybe describe. Um, we were, we've been making the UI for this and you brought up something that I didn't realize, which is like, you have to like, and this is not because we built it this way. It's just because this is how Ethereum works. You have to do like what, like two or three transactions to actually make this whole burn happen, right? That's true. Yeah. So the burn process is quite a lot like adding liquidity on like Sushi Swap or Uniswap or something like that, right? Um, so if you've added liquidity or done like any DeFi or yield farming, let's say that you want to, well, maybe I'm getting too in the weeds, right? But, but like, let's say that you want to provide two tokens to liquidity, right? You approve, you do an approved transaction. You know, you have to do this before you sell on OpenSea is maybe a better analogy, right? You have to sort of do one transaction to like, you know, start your OpenSea wallet and then a second transaction for every time you have a new NFT that you want to sell. It's basically the same way where you're essentially saying like, I'm allowing the burn contract to take my soul, uh, to take my wizard. That's the first transaction. I'm allowing the burn contract to take my flame. That's the second transaction. And then the third transaction is you're saying, okay, take those two tokens from me, burn them, and mint me a new soul. So, yeah, it will be three transactions. I don't love it. I wish the gas was cheaper than it is, but it's just life on the blockchain. So, uh, you you know, it might be advantageous. That's why it'll be good that we're on the weekend too, though, because, you know, gas is typically slow on Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just I wanted to call that out. Just, like, be prepared for three freaking gas transactions. I know that kind of sucks, but it's really the only way you can do it on ethereum um it might be kind of expensive on sunday because there's a lot of collections doing halloween stuff and dropping things on sunday so be prepared for that interesting yeah two questions come to mind one about gas and one about open sea um given that forgotten runes wizards are on chain is one of these three transactions going to be like an on-chain transaction? Because people should be aware of that uh, because gas is higher for on-chain stuff. So if you're approving your wizard, uh, uh, I'm wondering if that will be an on-chain uh, transaction. So that might be a bit higher. Uh, the second question is about OpenSea. OpenSea has done a thing where if you receive an NFT that's not from a verified collection, it goes into your hidden tab. So I'm wondering if OpenSea is going to be kind enough to put Forgotten Souls as a verified collection. Um, and if not, um, that's okay, but it might be good to advise people that they need to find their soul in the hidden tab, because otherwise people are going to be like, oh my god, I burned my wizard and I can't <laughs> find my soul. <laughs> Hope, yeah, we'll t we, we, I don't know. I, th these I th the the origin transaction will come from your address, so I think OpenSea will detect that you wanted it. Um, 
But yeah, in both these cases, they're all three are on-chain transactions. Thankfully, the first two are approved transactions, which are some of the cheapest that you do. You know, I mean, depend if ga- I don't know what gas has been lately, but like um, the first two are relatively cheap. The the actual burning because it needs to sort of like burn two tokens, mint a third token, and write to the book of lore. Um, you know, it's maybe a little expensive. It's maybe like two Uniswap transactions. I wish I could get it lower, but that was as best I could do. Cool. Thanks. Um, cool. Well, we have a few other things we have to talk about unless, unless there are any more burn questions. Any more burning questions? <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, yeah, it's going to be awesome, guys. Um, I can't wait for you to see the collection. Uh, okay. I just wanted to, um, geez, I I got so many little points. I don't know where to, where to start. Okay. Random point. We are, um, we are hiring a full-time artist starting next week. Um, already hired. Yeah. Yeah. She's great. Um, I've worked with her before. The reason we're hiring her, well, several reasons. Um, number one, she like, she knows how to use Photoshop, A Sprite, Maya, After Effects, like all the full freaking suite. She can do it all. Um, and so she's going to be helping make GIFs, helping make Discord emotes, helping make memes, helping with the freaking walk cycles, helping with pixel art, help it like literally anything we want, she's going to help with. Um, you know, th- this is something that, that like I myself just constantly want. I want to do more infographics. I want to do more discord emotes. I want to do just more art for, for our socials. It's, it's like, it's like burning inside me, but I'm, I'm like busy drawing ghosts and stuff, which is great, but it's just like, we needed like one more artist um, to just help with these other things. So we're hiring a totally full-time person to help with this. Um, and so I think it's going to be great. She's she's super cool. We'll invite her up here to speak if she wants to uh, next week or the week after. So that's going to happen. And um, Dodo, did you want to say anything about that? I'm just very excited. Yeah, yeah, she's great. Uh, her name is Kristen. Or maybe maybe I shouldn't have <laughs> just said that. I don't know if she wants to have a, a pseudonym, but I forgot we all use pseudonyms. <laughs> Her pseudonym is Kristen. Yeah, go. exactly. <laughs> is, is she is she going to be taking on commissions or focusing on building like artwork within the community at all? Like by request? No, she's not really a commission person, and I don't know. Unless, no, probably not. No, she's more just like doing like official art for the team, if that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, no, but commission wise, no, we've got tons of people, Brad, Margaret, Tad Major, I mean, just countless, like so many of you guys, let, let me take an opportunity to say this. I was, I've been looking in the discord. I, I lurk in there. I, I, I see what's going on. Um, and you guys are just blowing me away with how much passion and life and activity and energy and just heat that you're bringing to this project like i I was looking at bread's um like nouns remixes of wizards yeah Uh, so excited oh my god they're great and i'm I, i just like i sit back in my chair and i'm just like what have we created this this is fucking amazing that just what the things that you guys are doing and so i you know i just want to say thank you and like Dota, right? I mean, it's just mind blowing what everybody's doing. I can't wait to get our first like wizard collection, like derivative collection out. I love like the the nouns wizards, though. I think that might be kind of secret. She hasn't shared it to everyone yet. <laughs> yeah, you kind of spoiled a little, but it's okay. <laughs> oh, Brett, I'm so sorry. It was in the Discord. <laughs> I thought it's it was okay. public. Everybody in the um the guild saw it already. Yeah. Okay. Right. The guild now is officially. Right. Right. <laughs> are you are you allowed to talk about it at all, Brad? Are you allowed to come on and? I'm. I'm. I'm We're on... launching a token. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. 
Oh, I'm so, such an idiot, you, Brad. I'm so it was sorry. Actually, I think it was TV's idea. So it's up to him whether or his original idea to do noun wizards. Yeah, soon. <laughs> I, I'm so sorry. Um, well, they look They're freaking awesome. Fun. They look amazing. Yeah, a little teaser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you, yeah. I just, it's, it's impressive. We'll, we'll bring you up to speak whenever you're ready and whenever they're done. You can talk about them. Um, cool. It looks like we've got some other requests. Let me see. Oh, the watercolors from I think they're from um like iClick. I actually forget who made those. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to say it. I, it, I click, whatever. Um, those are freaking amazing. Yeah, really good. Yeah, I click. If you're if you're in the chat, um, I've I well, I've been DMing this person asking if I can commission some wizards. But yeah, there they are. They're up in our um, little thing. Um, but yeah, I I love them. I love them so much. Um, I mean, one of my favorite things about them is like they're made with watercolor, which is a very organic medium, very loose. But it they they kind of retain a little bit of the the pixel quality, so it's it's like this really interesting balance that I haven't seen done in, in watercolor. Do we have someone reading lore today? We do. Crypto Kel's going to read lore, um, and yes, we will definitely do that in a bit. Um, there's one other thing I just want to touch on. Uh, the um, the Titmouse animation. Um, I, I think we talked the about. Yeah, the trailer. the trailer. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so we've got the 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 TV development deal, but then we also have the sixty second trailer. It's kind of weird to call it a trailer because it, it's I, th I feel like it's more than that, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, so I just wanted to update you guys on that. Um, so yeah, we've we've been working with Titmouse on this for for the past few weeks, almost like a month or more. Uh, we've been we're we're at like the storyboard animatic phase and. The final cut of the animatic was supposed to be last Friday. And so first, let me just say, Titmouse has been an absolute to delight to work with. I have loved every meeting we've had. They've been super nice. They're super talented. I love it. Um, the Friday, the, the final cut they sent on Friday was great. And, and I think like most projects or most people would have said, this is perfect. Let's green light it. Let's go. Um, but I am an obnoxious perfectionist. And I think if we are spinning this kind of What's that, Dota? Uh, yeah, I love it. Uh, okay, yeah. So, okay, but but I think it can be better. Um, if we're spinning this kind of money, and, and this is <laughs> going to be like our greatest promotional piece for a while, it, it's it's got to fucking melt faces. It's got to be operating at 110%. And, and I, th I think it's at like 90% now. Um, and so basically we've decided to extend production by another two weeks just to get it perfect. And so, so yeah. And, and so ba basically, you know, it, it's operating at, at 80 and I need it to be a hundred. And here's, here's what I mean. So like every single shot needs to be loaded to its utmost in storytelling fidelity. We've only got 60 seconds in this whole piece. And I want to tell on a story that spans the entire map with as many wizards as possible. There needs to be layers and layers of storytelling happening in each shot. And, and some of them now only have one layer. And so, so that's why we're exp extending production by two more weeks, uh, because, because every shot has to have multiple layers of storytelling. And of course, to balance all this information, you have to art do it artistically because it can't be a chaotic mess. A mess. So, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make this thing an absolute symphony, a 12-course meal, and an epic novel with all of the drama masterfully packed into 60 seconds. And, and I'm hoping by the end of this, when we release this, this is going to be the kind of thing that a lot of you might step through frame by frame, dissecting each shot, figuring out what's going on. Um, and so, yeah, so that, that's that's what we're trying to achieve with this this trailer. It's looking really good. I can't wait to share it to everyone. Yep. Yep. Um, cool. Looks like we have another 
request to speak. Um, uh, yeah, I saw we had real top shot coming up here. I also saw Tom was here for a second. I'm not sure if you were able to get on stage. Oh yeah, you know what? I have to. I think I have to kick some people off stage um, to let other people up. You can um, kick me. That's cool. Okay, cool. <laughs> let me, yeah, let me uh, remove. Let me, me too. Yep. Yeah, okay. Cool. Uh, remove. Yeah, I think that's what the problem is. Okay, there we go. There we go. Cool. Um, oops. Okay, new speakers. Hello. Hi, Zach. Hey, real top shot. Hey. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, uh, real quick, I had a couple questions. Um, first, I just wanted to say that I'm really blown away with this project. Really like it a lot. Uh, I think I joined you guys like a week or so after your original Mint. Um, the first time I ever heard about a wizard, I bought one within a couple minutes. And uh, really happy about that decision. Um, I'm a proud flame holder. And I would very much like to contribute to the book of lore. My my question is, um, my wizards are currently held in a Coinbase wallet, which is oh, unable no. to connect through Wallet Connect. And <laughs> so I, I'm interested in burning my wizard, but I'm also very committed to writing in the book of lore. Um, I'm torn because I don't want to transfer my wizard because I don't know. I received the flame by holding a wizard in the same wallet for a long time. Mm -hmm. And who knows if other good things could come to those that have held a wizard or a flame for a long period of time. So I'm really reluctant to transfer and really reluctant to, um, to not write in the book of lore. So what would you advise I do? Um, I mean, we're working to get the Coinbase wallet issue addressed. I mean, I think we've started work on it. Um, it's hard for us to like maybe make any promises about long, uh, like what will be the qualifications for any future airdrop, right? Like sort of longest holding wallets is a good metric in that it's helpful because you can see people who didn't sell, but it's also difficult for all the reasons that you mentioned, right? Like maybe you bought it under a wallet you don't want to move. You need to move it to like a ledger. Um, I mean, I think if you're going to be burning a wizard anyway, I can't think of a scenario where we're going to like reach back. Um, like what I mean is like, let's say you have wizard A and you're going to burn him. You could move him to a MetaMask, write his lore, and then burn the wizard. That, like, I wouldn't see a case where that would disqualify you for a future kind of airdrop. Okay, that's good to know. Well, and another thing to keep in mind, and this is for everybody, um, writing in the book of lore is a good way to get whitelisted for airdrops as well. Right? Am, I, am I allowed exactly. to Exactly. Yeah, we're way more likely in the future... Well, I mean, not that we wouldn't prioritize longest holder, but like what we did for, for example, even for the flames was like the first 100, it actually ended up being the first 101, which was literally every single person who had written in the book of lore by that point. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Just say that last part again. Uh, I was saying that there were 101 people who wrote in the book of lore. Um, that was every single person who wrote in the book of lore, even after we announced, you know, you get a flame if you write in the book of lore pretty much. Um, yeah. Like, and then they were prioritized over the longest holding accounts. And that's something that we're more likely to do in the future. Like we're more likely to kind of prefer, like maybe there will be passive um, conditions for receiving an airdrop, but we're almost always going to prefer an active condition over a passive one because I think our community is so built around like writing lore and creating. Um, I think that's like one of the reasons that's like, Someone told me even that was why they hadn't bought a wizard because they were like, yeah, it seems like to be successful in wizards, you need to be like creative and like making things and producing. And I don't really feel creative. So I just like skipped over it. And, you know, like, well, what do we change something there? I'm not sure. But I think that his analysis was spot on, which is like we're a very like active community. And so that's where we'll prioritize in future drops. Um, not to say we won't have passive, but that's what will we'll be the first first priority. Yep. Sounds good. So um, I guess along that same vein, then, 
if, if I have multiple wizards and I want to make an entry with all of them, that's great. Um, but the one wizard that I do select to be burnt, should I, should I do that? Um, not having that token anymore, not being the owner of that wizard token, how does that work if you've written lore for a token that no longer exists? Is that going to, I mean, obviously you can still see what wallet wrote the lore and what wallet was used to burn that wizard. Do you foresee anything in the future where um, wallets that wrote in the book of lore prior to a wizard being burnt would be more advantageous? That's interesting. Just you know, we don't have any airdrops planned, so it's like really hard for me to like, um, you know, make those kinds of future promises. I do think it's like in every case, we're just trying to be as thoughtful as we can about like who should receive this, right? Like, um, and really what fits within the narrative of our world. Like when we do an airdrop, it's not just like, oh, we're sending tokens because, you know, we like buzz. It's almost, it's, it's always going to be like, this is part of the narrative of our Runiverse. And there's like, there's going to be a reason for it. So if the reason ends up being like, oh, we want to airdrop something to everyone who owns a soul or something, then, you know, you'll be covered. Excellent. Good. Gotcha. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah. So I, I, even if you did have an airdrop planned, I wouldn't want you to disclose it because the fun is in the, yeah. the kind of secrecy of it, the, the hidden qualities that, it's just a fun surprise. I can't even begin to tell you. I was on vacation with my family when I just was browsing through my Coinbase wallet like I often do multiple times a day. And to just see that flame, like I was totally unplugged from the Internet. I had no idea what was happening. I was just like, I mean, like jumping up and down. I was like so excited. <laughs> I love so, it. I love so, it. Thank you guys for all your hard work. And of course, thanks for yeah. taking my questions. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, any other questions? Um, just quickly, just want to say that uh, briefly, uh, I really, really appreciate how you how you guys handled the airdrop for the flames. I think it was probably the most thoughtful way to do an airdrop. Um, I know that you guys that you guys deliberated it for, for quite a long time over a couple of methods that you figured would be the perfect one, and I think that you hit the nail right on the head for making sure that you know most people. Thanks. I Wait. I think I accidentally hit the mute everyone button while, while you were talking, <laughs> Magus Devin. But but I, I I hear what you're saying and and thank you so much. We yeah, we put a lot of thought into um, how to drop these flames. Um, I hope everyone's not permanently muted. No, I think Dota, can you? Okay, cool. All right, cool. Yeah, I was trying to request a, a speaker request or approve a speaker. Yeah, that request. button okay. is really close. You muted at the at the best time. I just finished talking about it though. Okay, okay, cool. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, so we have a Thanks, like, two minutes left, and I want CryptoCal to read some lore, but I want to just quickly do some shout outs real quick. Um, so Magus Wazir, of course, again, as always, uh, first of all, uh, I think as Magus, always. Magus Wazir made a, a commitment to post once a day. I Was it until the show or until the burning? I can't remember exactly what his, the time limit was. Um, but until yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. Until so he dies, I just, an animation or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um. Exactly. That's what it was. I, so I just want to draw draw attention to the most impressive thing I thought he's done this week, which is which was like that that CG version of his character. Like, dude, how do you do these things so fast? You're blowing my mind. Let's bring him up here. I, I don't. I don't think he wants to come up. If he does, he's just going to ring a bell. Is that the second reason why you prolonged the animation drop? Because you want to see two more weeks of his posting? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Magus was here. You got two more weeks to fill up. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so but Magus. I've been Wazir, working. I, I, go ahead. I've been working on a theory of who he might be. So he can't, he's probably not Vitalik. So maybe he's he's Beeple or somebody on that team right now. <laughs> <laughs> he joined like right before all this shit started happening. Yeah, he just came out of nowhere. Um, yeah, Magus was here. Still, there's a standing inv invitation for you to come up and speak anytime you want, but no pressure. Um, but we love what you're doing. 
Uh, and then I saw I, Tiki Teki, I think, made a, th- a 3D print for Magus Wazir, um, which was just gorgeous. Um, I, yeah, I, I love seeing those. Um, Mindio and Hen Boyd have been making lots of awesome memes. Um, we called out I- Ikleek's uh, watercolors. Um, I also want to give a quick acknowledgement to Wiz Ramiz, who DM'd me like a few weeks ago and suggested that we somehow get uh, Duncan Trussell to join the cult, which I think is an excellent suggestion. Uh, so, I, yeah, we'll work on that. So thanks, Wiz Ramiz. I, I don't want you to think I'm ignoring that suggestion. Um, I think it's a great idea. He'd, he'd be perfect. Um, for those of you don't, who don't know, Duncan Trussell voiced um, the main character in Midnight Gospel. I think that's who it is. I'm, maybe I'm wrong on that. Yeah, one of the time. It's actually Great. it's actually his show. He's the one who who pretty much wrote it. I mean, well, writing is different because it's kind of like a podcast in animation form. But yeah, sure. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So he, perfect candidate for to join the cult. Um, and then I feel like I was going to say one more thing. Dota, do you have any shout outs that you wanted to make? We can get to them through the tip mouse. Uh, no, none more than this. Okay, cool. I, mean, I guess uh, really to like the day. Niski is killing it, by the way. Like, he hasn't been up here on stage, but maybe we should have him sometime. Like, he's really been my right hand in terms of programming and um, helping get the souls ready. He's doing such a great job. Also, Chuck K has been working on a um, burn bot, uh, which is in testing, so that way we can have, like, a Discord bot. And um, So, yeah, the, the, the lots of good folks who have joined the guilds and have things bubbling up. Yep. Oh, and I saw an amazing uh, video by Chemical Imbalance. Um, I, I think he uploaded the wrong video because he, he took it down. I, it was like a, a poor quality, but I think he's going to re-upload a better quality. Um, it, it was It's epic. So yeah, we'll wait for him to repost that. Um, but yeah, thank you, Chemical Imbalance. Well done. And, and, and again, there's so many like amazing things happening in the discord that, that I'm not like calling out, but it just blows me away every day. Um, so thanks guys. Um, yeah, good then, boy. Good times. You just came up here, Logan. Hello. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, uh, I just wanted to say I'm working on a walk right now. Big buckle blue. And, uh, okay. thanks for letting me help out. Yes, good boy is helping with the walk cycles. We'll get them done one of these okay. days. Yes. Oh yeah, thanks guys. Can I add to hell? Before uh, we start reading the lore. Sure. Yeah. Please. Yeah. 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 Lore All right, master. So I, I recently got into the Wagme project, and the Discord is really cracking off in there. I just want to remind everybody that you don't have to own your uh, like your wizard's bag, like. I picked up a bag secondary market and it's still and like got grailed. So, um, yeah, this is really exciting. And I, I like advise people to pick up a bag secondary market if you can. Awesome. Yep. Yep. That's it. Very cool. Uh, crypto Kell, are you ready? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Is sounding okay. Yes, hey. Sounds good. All right. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a wizard that some of the regulars have probably heard of already. And some of you may even be a little tired of hearing from her as she's pretty active on Twitter, actually, and, and also in the wizard Discord. Um, but for those of you who don't know, I'm going to talk about Chaos Mage Mio of the Wood. Um, so she's got her Twitter profile. Just search Chaos Mage Mio. I think there might be a picture profile coming up of her in a little bit that you can look at while I'm telling you a little bit more about her. Um, hey, Crypto, quick quick question. Are you the owner of Chaos Mage Mio? Chaos Mage Mio is her her own thing. I don't wouldn't say I'm her owner so much as I'm her steward. <laughs> or try to keep her okay, very control. Cool. Yeah, you don't have <laughs> Very cool, yeah. I, it, it's so funny. So many of you guys are multiple identities, and I never know who's who. But anyway. Yeah, continue. so basically, Chaos Mage Mio, she's running what she's calling a special wizard burn election. Um, I'm not really involved in all that, but uh, she's going to be communicating the final candidate and opening it up for voting with the idea that the uh, winner is going to get burned. But we'll, we'll see what she does. She's not exactly reliable. But uh, what she 
doesn't really talk about is about herself. So I'm here to tell a little bit about her past and where Mio came from and how she got to how she is today. So since birth, Mio lived at a cinnabar mine. Uh, and cinnabar is a rock, a red type of rock, and mercury is actually extracted from that. And that is prized among the alchemist community for its unique properties. Uh, and among the wider wizarding community as an occasional source of powerful cinnabar runes. Uh, unfortunately, some unscrupulous red wizards created company towns and ensnared poor laborers into perpetual debt. And the life expectancy for the mercury miners is low due to the exposure of the mercury. So unfortunately, by the age of 10, Mio had already lost both parents as a result of this. Uh, but unfortunately, their debt was passed on to her based on the contract they had signed. And so she remained at the mine. The children were not forced to work deep in the mines where the exposure was the greatest. They mainly act as gophers and messengers. But still, Mio was constantly exposed to a low level of mercury, and gradually she noticed that her hands constantly trembled. She kept forgetting things, and she struggled to keep her energy up. Still, the mine owners would not relent. She needed to keep working off her debt as long as she was physically able. Unfortunately, her housing, bare bones as it was, exceeded her meager wages. One day, feeling especially weak, Mio felt she couldn't go on. She crawled into a dark, abandoned shaft of the mine, wishing for maximum exposure in order to end her suffering quickly. However, instead of a quick death, she found something else. As she lay there in the dark, she suddenly noticed two luminous eyes looking back at her. A feline form emerged, glowing red with otherworldly cinders. As she stared at what appeared to be a cat, a symbol formed in her head, the rune of cinnabar. It felt like a question. She accepted the power, and the rune became part of her being. As she breathed deep, inhaling the mercury vapors and the magic both, she suddenly felt more powerful than she ever had before. It was intoxicating. Now she was the one who would be giving the orders. She was the one who would make her will a reality. A floating ball of glowing lava slowly appeared above one hand, and the face that it revealed looked much different from the tired soul that had crawled into that crevice. Rumors abound about what really happened to destroy the cinnabar mine. Everyone knows that a freak earthquake struck the mine. At the same time, magma bubbled up from under the mine, flooding the tunnels even as they collapsed. There were a few individuals who claimed to have formerly worked at the mine, after a few drinks at the tavern, some of them claimed to have seen a demon emerge from the mines, wading through the magma as if it were water, and laughing as the magma engulfed everything in sight. When pressed on why they had survived to tell the tale, one fellow claimed that they would have been consumed, but the demon turned away at the last moment to head toward the owner's compound, allowing him and a handful of others who had been outside of the mine at the time to escape. Many of the self-proclaimed survivors happened to be children, but their tales were dismissed out of hand as fanciful, particularly the ones about a magic glowing cat that had walked beside the fiery apparition. These days, Mio does what she likes. She can be kind or angry, brutal or merciful, according to her whims. She scoffs at wizard conventions and norms, and this can be seen in both her personal style as well as in the way she conducts herself. Unfortunately, the effects of the mercury have permanently altered her psyche, and her frequent and untutored use of magic hasn't helped. As a result, anyone who interacts with her is never quite sure what to expect. She tends to make for a powerful but fickle ally. Just make sure her interests stay aligned with yours. Unfortunately, lately she's learned about the sacred flames and seems to view them both as a source of amusement, as well as alternatively to punish people, gain more powerful servants, or even just to sate her curiosity. However, as she continues to learn more about the flames, they seem to have become an obsession. Will she go through with her wizard burn election, or do the flames call to her personally? Stay tuned to find out. Kel, that was excellent. Really well-structured story. Um, I, I love how you put the childhood in there and how you you nailed the uh, the red wizards. I mean, they are certainly um, pillaging profiteer type wizards. Um, 
and just like like you really filled out her whole story like i i can see this character i i understand her that's so well done thank you and i just say if you're curious there are entries in the book of lore about some of these wizard burn candidates and some of them have actually escaped so uh there's some uh threads to follow if you're interested so good man Excellent. Well done. I loved it. And I, and I love that you used the, the rune, the Cinnabar rune. Um, it's the first time I've heard somebody write about that. Um, a lot of people forget about the rune. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you, you wove it masterfully into the story. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Elf. Is the, I, I did some lore today for literally the most messed up, psychotic, sociopathic wizard that I've ever seen. Is there time for me to read that? Yeah, yeah. Go I, for it. I, I just got to say that I'm impressed and shout out to Zarkim, who wrote this really beautiful, long sort of lore uh, that he's going to be putting in the book of lore. And it's just gorgeous. But he wanted a poem as well about his wizard who I'm just getting the number for it's 4553 and it's pyromancer Eden so here's the poem about him fire in my veins since the first time I learned how so alive so willing worked and built my wisdom every being I have burned I carry with me beyond grief and guilt the sacrament of blackened, bubbling flesh designs the flame, the color of the soul that feeds it. Ancient prophecies will mesh with all my crimes. I will not pay the toll for knowledge. Hardy rooters, ruler's son I killed to feed the living flame. Thought he was low, born, but the knights of justice drank their fill of me. So I must pack my things and go into the forest. Tall, unmarked by shame, I look for destiny, the sacred flame. Awesome. I, I love that all of our lore today is fire themed. That's, that's perfect. Yeah. Uh, so stay away from this wizard if you see him, because he's going to cut you up and use you for science experiments. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Margaret. And I'm so glad that you're still writing poems for us. Margaret has been with us since the beginning. It's, it's so great. Oh, um, I got to say, too, the first time we posted, I think we posted an honorary for Claire. Um, it's the Crowmaster Claire. And then Margaret replied with a poem. That was yeah. really the moment that I was like, oh, we have something special here, like on our hands. Yeah. Yeah. The, when I, I got off and told my wife and me, I was like, and then somebody wrote a poem. And reply <laughs> to this wizard with a poem. This is amazing. And so, yeah, Margaret, thank you so much for for making it special from like even before Mint. Yep. Yeah, that's that's how we discovered Margaret. She just randomly wrote a poem under a wizard, and she was then forever our bard. Um. Cool. So we're almost out of time. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? Bear Snake, you haven't said said much this this time. You got anything you want to add? He's just curling my. Uh... My tungsten cube over here. His arms are looking huge. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, th I'm still recovering from talking so much last week. Uh, you know, not, okay. not not much really. I think, um, you know, we're fielding um, a lot of really cool incoming conversations with a bunch of different uh, opportunities and, you know, just trying to suss out what makes sense for us and what doesn't and working on all the longer term projects and uh, I'm more bullish than ever um, and appreciate everybody here and everybody in the community. It's it's all headed in the right direction and, and I'm ready to blow the top off. Yep. Cool. Um, I think I invited one person up. I don't know if they got it. Um okay cool i guess that's it dota are you are we are we good yeah if, unless anybody has any other questions i think we're good awesome well guys remember um we're having the watch party in our discord on all hallows eve be sure to connect with Loch Ness if you want to broadcast your burn uh and until then this has been elf and dota
channeling out from the quantum downs. Good night, everybody. <laughs>